So hello and a warm welcome to the refreshing views observatory. As you can see, we've changed the setup. This is a Skywatcher AZ EQ6. So I am going to give you my thoughts on how it performed. So while I was researching mounts, I spent ages watching videos, looking at different approaches of what could be set up. And it soon becomes apparent that for a serious and capable mount, very quickly spend a serious amount of money. But this mount, the AZ EQ6, seems to offer quite a capability. It's got 15 kilograms for imaging and 25 kilograms for visual or for, like I've got it set up here, planetary observing, planetary imaging. So it does offer that quite a capability, but without that serious price tag. I was lucky to score an absolute bargain. These normally retail for about £1,700 and I got one like new in box. It was a return to First Light Optics for £1,300. So really happy to have that discount. And I did tell Mrs Refreshing Views that we, by buying this mount, I had actually saved the family £400. <laughs> Plus, of course, it's got the benefit of being able to set it up in equatorial mode for, for imaging or like I've got it here and for it as a visual setup or for lunar and planetary imaging. So the head itself weighs 15 kilograms, so that's over 30 pounds if you're still in old fashioned Imperial units. It's pretty heavy, so not sure you'd want to use this as a grab and go setup, but for a permanent setup, of course, that doesn't matter. So as you know, I've used for the past few years a Celestron C11 on an old EQ6 Pro mount, and that was awesome. Gave great views, great fun for watching Mars, great fun for imaging Jupiter and its moons. But because it was an equatorial mount, the eyepiece and the finder scope were always in weird positions. So I was always having to rotate the diagonal or peer up into the eye, into the finder scope when it was in a weird place. So what I really like about this is having both telescopes. I've got my solar telescope at the moment. I've got both telescopes set up at the same time with tracking with go to comfortable for observing no need for polar alignment no need for meridian flip and it's future proof so if i ever want to get into the horrors of deep sky imaging i can put it in equatorial mode it's got serious payload capacity as well so i could, uh, yeah, I could even upgrade this telescope as well to something bigger so how does it perform how does it compare to the old eq6 so first of all we'll swap out the old mount and I really wish it took this amount of time. I'm now going to assemble the new mount and I put the video into chapters. So if you want to skip this bit, you can. Okay, so what do we get in the box? Uh, instructions and instructions. Who needs them? So it looks like we have a hand controller, a saddle, the thing that the hand controller goes in, cables, cables, more cables, the mount itself, and a counterweight bar. So that's for the second telescope to go on. And this will be the heavy bit, this will be the mount. The old EQ6 was absolutely awful for the acid latitude adjustment. And that is so much better. Why they didn't do this on the old version, I do not know. It was with the real failings of it.
11 on it. This is the chair. Right, so I need to flip myself round. One, two, three. We're in. Look off that. That's the Wi Fi dongle. Power supply, and the one thing I really hate is cigarette lighter adapters, so I'll probably swap that out for a 5.5mm. I'll just solder a fresh connector on the end of that. You just see there's a little dimple inside there, and obviously that. It's the way you then know which way round you're plugging it is correct. Oh, we have power. So one of the things I've realised I've done wrong since I set up the C11 and the Megray is that this needs a bit more counterweight. This telescope's so much heavier than the Megray, so I need to just quickly grab the Allen key and fit another counterweight. Right, so there it is, the new telescope set up. We've got the big heavy C11 with the Megway 90 and a counterweight. Right, so put the telescopes horizontal. We're going to line that up with that. That's due north, set that horizontal. Turn you on. So we're outside now, it's a beautiful summer's evening. As you can see by the sky behind me, it's still not properly dark. Beautiful view of the moon, love looking at the moon. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a go-to to Arcturus, which is nearest, damn it, overhead, just to show you how quiet the motors are. So here we are, I've got the phone ready, we'll do the go-to. I just can't believe how quiet that is. Absolutely wonderful, especially in the small hours when I'm not going to be waking up the family or disturbing the neighbours. Brilliant. And while I've been out, I've realised, of course, that the moon, I've been observing the moon for about an hour now, the moon has crossed the meridian. Now, with my old telescope, with the EQ6, I've been getting nervous about having to do a meridian flip with this Altazimuth setup. I don't have to worry about it. No cable wrap, no thing to worry about. So we've been having some cracking views through the eyepiece. The problem is I've got the moon in the big Celestron and I've then swung across to look through the refractor and the refractor is slightly offset left to right. I need to angle it in slightly. The problem is that the mount doesn't let you do that. It lets you adjust in altitude but not in azimuth. So I'm probably going to, have to get some washers and try and shim uh, between the dovetail rings or something like that just to try and offset it so this is what I did I just put a penny washer like this between the dovetail and the rings just in there and that's just enough it's not the most elegant of solutions but it's enough just to shim it back into line so first impressions after an, a, an hour of use it's so quiet the motors are unbelievably quiet so that's brilliant for nighttime use particularly if the weather's nice someone's got their windows open so really quiet. I love having two eyepieces. I love being able to switch back and forth. I'm really excited because if I'm say looking at the moon or the planets with the big scope, I can still enjoy the visual views with the smaller scope as well without having to swap cameras and eyepieces around. The um, handling, the ergonomics is really nice. Quite enjoying that as well. And it's holding them out, holding both telescopes with ease. It really is. It swings them around quite happily. So yeah, really pleased, really versatile, good performer. So it's the following morning, I've come back out again. I'm going to try and set up some solar observing. I've done the usual thing, I've rolled the roof back and it started to cloud over, but I'll set up anyway. When I was packing up last night, I put the mount into hibernate mode. So hopefully when I turn it back on again, it'll go straight back to tracking or know where it is. It remembers the alignment from the night before, so fingers crossed. So I've got the 60 millimeter lunch so the hydrogen alpha telescope. What I'm going to do now is swap it over for the Megway. So I set it up, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but anyway, I'm going to set it up in out else mode. Hibernate data, press it up, restore, state to mount. Restore. To avoid injury and use a certified telescope 
Well, I guess that is a Circus Fire telescope, so we'll OK that. It doesn't have the sun. Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, Mercury. Well, Mercury would be the closest, won't it? So like all men, I hadn't read the manual. <laughs> Under settings, advanced, there is a tip box to allow solar observing. So if you remember in the last video, we did talk about observing the sun safely. So this is a proper, as they said, certified hydrogen alpha telescope. That's got its dust covers on, the finder scope's got its cap on. Yes, it has, that's got a cap on, there's nothing there. So we are good to go. So you can actually use this now to track the sun during the daytime. Right, let's get a camera in there because that's stunning. Some really impressive prominences. A few sunspot groups. It is tracking quite happily, I haven't got any corrections in here other than just scanning around the sun. So, And that's with a, you know, a three-star alignment from two nights ago. There we go, that's what's up the prominences. So I'm going to put the scope back into hibernate mode and then you can have a choice. You have a choice and you can put it at the current position or the home position. We'll go to the home position. So the other thing I have noticed since I have been setting this up in, in the daytime, normally I come out here, of course it's dark, you're looking at the stars, you can't see what's going on, is the amount of spiders and spiders cobwebs. I have to give the place a really good clean. It's been quite scary, both for the spider's point of view and for my point of view as well. So, ugh, horrible cleaning it up in the summertime. So having put the mount through its paces over the last few nights, I must say I really like it. It's a versatile mount, it's a capable mount, it certainly meets my needs, carries the telescopes with ease, daytime, nighttime use. So in addition to those broad capabilities, there's a number of design improvements that Skywatch have done compared to my old EQ6. Firstly, the altitude adjustment, oh my goodness, is so much better, so much more improved compared to the old EQ6. I don't know why they have that, I find it so frustrating that the bolts would bend. Secondly is the power connector being able to screw this on so it doesn't come off, you don't have to put plastic clips on to hold the cable into place. And luckily of course by screwing it in that gives it a little bit more ingress protection. And also I like the clutch brakes, these are a lot better than the old one which used to sometimes just move the telescope ever so slightly when you were pushing, when you were putting them down. Whereas with this approach they seem to just clamp over the, the clutch and lock it into position. And be aware you may have to add a shim to line the second telescope up. It's not really a grab and go setup, but it's not designed to be that. But it is very future proof, and I'm looking forward to using this for years to come. Don't drop that. But of course, with this altazimuth setup, with this altazimuth setup, every time a train goes past. <laughs> Remember I left my phone, which is over here. <coughs> Jeez, don't like that. So I've got the new counterweight, and looking at me, I really do need a haircut. It's big heavy C11, and now that is better balanced between the, with the Megray and the, uh, whatever, kilogram, whatever that, let's do that again. 